Hello everyone. Today I want to show you how to draw a DNA helix in my favorite free vector graphic illustration software Inkscape. We are going to use primitive shapes like circles, squares and rectangles to create our DNA helix. Most DNA helix drawings you see are left-handed and this is wrong. Even many in high-end scientific journals. If you want to know how to get it right, please stick till the end of the video where I am going to show you. And you will learn how you can avoid being wrong too. To ease the work for you, I have prepared this worksheet with Fibonacci circles. To get a copy, find a link in the description section below. The skills I show here can also be done in commercial software like Adobe Illustrator, Sketch, Affinity Designer, or Corel Draw. On the document, you will see two representations of Fibonacci circles. I explain elsewhere what it is and how it can help you in design. I am going to begin by selecting the fifth circle from outside and pressing Ctrl D to duplicate it. I will pull it and place it here on the top right corner like so. You can click on any color of the color palette to give it a fill color. I choose blue. Next, you can right click just after the colors on the status bar and remove the stroke. With the circle still selected, I want you to come up here on the tools control bar and copy its diameter. Next, Select the Rectangles and Squares tool. Press down on Shift and Control and pull on the canvas to draw a perfect square like so. With the square still selected, go to the Tools control bar. Press on this lock to lock the aspect ratio and paste in the radius of the circle. You copy it to have the square take this as its length and width. Select and position the square. Press Ctrl D to make a duplicate. Press on the Ctrl key and pull the duplicate to sit on the right like so. Make a second duplicate and pull it to sit on the right of the first square. Select the first square. Go to the Tools control bar and press on the lock to unlock the aspect ratio. In the field for the height, write in the multiplication sign, asterisk, and multiply the height by 4. Select the circle. Give it a color of your choice. I choose orange. The purpose here is for differentiation. With the circle still selected, I want you to go to the tools control bar. Press on the path lock to lock the aspect ratio. Multiply the diameter of the circle by 2. Select the Note tool or press the shortcut N on your keyboard. Grab the circle on its geometric center and pull it to snap and sit on the edge of the second square like so. Press S on your keyboard to switch to the Selection tool. Come up here to the Tools Controls and press this icon and bring the selected circle to sit on top. Drag the mouse over the square and circle to select both objects. Then go to Path, Division, or use the keyboard shortcut Control, Forward, Slash. Pull this cone-like part and bring it to the left to clear the way. Or would you call this shape a diamond? I am not so sure how I call this next geometric shape. If you know, please leave a comment below. However, I am going to call it a golden morphic triangle, or just morphic triangle for short. The references for this are found below. Select this golden morphic triangle and give it an orange color. Again, the purpose of the color is for differentiation. Press on Ctrl D to duplicate. Pull the duplicated golden morphic triangle using your mouse and bring it to snap to the rectangle like so. 
select the orange morphic triangle and duplicate again. Pull the duplicate to snap within the rectangle. Select the orange morphic triangle and duplicate again. Pull the duplicate down. Go to object, flip horizontal and then flip vertical. To be quick, I am going to press the keyboard shortcuts H and V on my keyboard. Pull the morphic triangle to sit at the bottom of the rectangle like so. Duplicate it and pull the duplicate to sit in the rectangle like so. Now select the morphic triangle within the rectangle and then press on shift and click on the rectangle to select both. With both selected, go to path division or use the keyboard shortcut control forward slash. Pull the part of the rectangle that has been sliced and keep it away. Repeat this procedure for the lower part. You can now select the resulting objects and go to path union or use the keyboard shortcut control and plus. We now have the building block of the DNA helix. We need to transform it for it to take that beautiful inclination we know. I am going to select this last square and give it an orange color for contrast as we perform the next steps. I am going to pull the last square towards our new shape till it snaps. I want to transform the helix building block horizontally through a length of the square. I will click on the ruler and drag a guideline to help me. Next, I would pull the square out of the way. I am going to click twice on the building block and grab this horizontal handle and pull it to the right to transform horizontally. I will pull my guideline away. Then holding down the control key, I will select and scale my new unit to have a smaller version. Next, I bring it to sit up here. I will press on control Z to have a duplicate and then on H to reflect that duplicate horizontally. I can now pull this new unit and let it snap with the first one. Duplicate this object by pressing on Ctrl Z and give the duplicate an orange color. Press on V to flip the copy vertically. Select the second half of the flipped unit and send it to the back so that the chirality is right-handed. And we now have a basic building block. I will select the block. Press Ctrl D on my keyboard to duplicate and pull the duplicate away. And now we have a basic unit. We can continually pull and oppose on the previous to have a cool DNA helix. I can now sequentially duplicate this unit and pull the duplicate to have it snap. And this is one representation of DNA you often see in the literature. For this tutorial, I will leave the wrongs. We will do them in another video showing how you can draw the DNA helix using the pen tool. Let us see other representations. We can duplicate this basic unit again and pull the lower unit to the left just a tiny bit. And we have another basic unit which we see in the literature. We could now duplicate this and expand to have a DNA helix. Lastly, we can also have this last variant of the DNA helix we often see in the literature. I will quickly rearrange the parts, duplicate and oppose the new copies for you to see this building up. I hope you can see how the basic units build up. Congratulations! You now know how to draw a DNA helix. However, when we look at a model of DNA, we notice that most of the drawings we see online are wrong. I have links in the description that explain this in more detail, whichever way you do it.
please make sure to reference existing crystal structures or models so you do it right. A really good appraisal of the problem as well as solutions is found in this website. I share a link with you in the description. That is how you can draw a DNA helix in Inkscape. If this video helped you, please give it a thumbs up. To see more videos on Inkscape in the future, please consider subscribing and turning on the notification bell. If there are specific things on the use of Inkscape in science, medicine and engineering you want me to cover, please leave a comment below. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video and as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.